good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Leverett, and I serve as the Administrator of Independent Living here at San Camillo, and also as Director of Marketing and Admissions for the campus. So today I'm here with Vince Sinefs, and Vince is a Senior Project Manager for Gilbane. We're gonna talk about something that we live and breathe every single day. We have for the past year, we will for the next year, and it is the East Residence. So um, my hope is everybody knows that we are building and um, and walk away from walk away from this webinar with more information on how a high rise is constructed and information on what it would be like to explore the possibilities of living in a high rise. So I'm going to turn it over to Vince, who's going to turn it back to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is an overview of our campus as it is today. So the, the tall building um, the, on the west end is San Camillo, and that's a 10-story high-rise. Um, San Camillo was built in two phases, in 1986 and in 1992. So that uh, currently houses 279 independent living apartments. The next building that we're going to spend most of our time on will be the East Residence, and the East Residence will be an expansion of our independent living. It will be adding 168 new units. So prior to um, the construction of the East Residence, all of our buildings were connected. A building was taken down. Our campus will be reconnected when the East Residence is done. So the two-story building north of the East Residence, that's what we call the South Residence. The South Residence houses 75 assisted living apartments and 67 skilled nursing um, units. And skilled nursing is primarily short-term rehab. Um, the building more, more northern is the North Residence. There's kind of a pattern going here. Um, this is our newest building. Um, the four-story portion of it is a retired Jesuit community. So the priests and brothers of the uh, Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, um, reside on our campus and we take care of all of their care needs. Next to that is our new memory care unit. And the new memory care unit has three um, neighborhoods. They all have enclosed courtyards. They are, were built to care for people with significant memory loss. So we're very proud of that building. On the corner is um, the Orders House. So the priest and brothers of the Order of St. Camillus, and it is an international order, and we do have a lot of visitors, um, have their own community space. and, and Prior to that, they did not, they lived all over the city wherever we could find space. So it's wonderful to have um, the order live in community again. So that's where we are today. We'll kind of walk into the agenda and what the goal of today is. So let's try to get everyone to understand just what it takes to build a 15 story independent living tower. So we'll go through and do a quick project overview uh, after a caring moment. Um, we start all of our meetings off with a caring moment so that we are always making sure that we're setting the meeting up for success with uh, everyone's in full involvement. So project overview, then we'll introduce the rest of the Gilbane team members. So myself and the rest of the team, uh, we'll talk a little bit how we handle safety on site and how we're doing right now. Look at uh, drone flights. We fly a drone on a weekly basis and it's uh, pretty interactive and great to see the progress from that vantage point talk through what kind of metrics we use with our schedule, quality and progress photos throughout the site, all the tools that we have in our toolbox to be able to successfully complete the project. Uh, I have some questions and then next steps. So kind of moving on right now. So from a caring moment, Julie, I know we had spoke earlier about maybe talking through what the East residence means and kind of how it transformed over the years. Yes, um, the Order of St. Camillus was established in the 1500s. And there's been so many carry moments over the centuries. I'm gonna take about three hours to go through them. Not really. Um, but St. Camillus Life Plan Community is owned and operated by the Order of St. Camillus. The mission of the order is to care for those who are in need. Um, since its inception in the 1500s, the mission has been carried out throughout the world and continues to be carried out throughout the world. The Camillians began serving the United States it will be 100 years next year. So that will be our centennial year of celebration. Um, and if you wanna learn more about the order specifically um, and its, its presence in the United States, 
I would encourage you to sign up for our next webinar, which is January 27th, and the priests from the order will be presenting. Our community itself is a nonprofit organization, faith based, and we have always remained committed to the mission of St. Camillus. Our organization has a strong social accountability role in the greater community. And we also make a lifelong commitment to our residents, which is unique to nonprofits primarily. Um, should a resident's care needs um, become high, they would never be discharged. If a resident never outlives their funds, they would never be discharged. So, you know, we believe in, in being a caring, not-for-profit, uh, mission-driven organization. Excellent. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll kind of get into the East Residence, the tower that's currently being built. So it's a 15-story, 535,000-square-foot structure um, that consists of two floors of below-grain parking structure and one floor of common space. So the first floor is 64,000 square feet. This has a lot of amenity spaces it's a, with a wellness center, a pool, theater, chapel, uh, formal dining space, pub. It's a fantastic space that will be able to provide a lot of amenities to the campus as a whole. And like Julie had mentioned earlier, this is the really the heart of campus is that this will tie all the buildings together and everyone have the opportunity to be able to utilize the space. So the upper floors, we talk through skinning down into the typical floors are floors two through 15, where there's 168 luxury apartments. Uh, right now there's uh, we're working on the existing occupied campus. Julian mentioned that earlier in the overview when we started, is that this is a campus that is active and running and flourishing. And part of that is making sure that we're having good conversation, coordinating with St. Camillus and the existing residents so that everyone is happy at the end of the day. So the, the structure right now is a complex post-tension concrete design. So we'll get into that a little bit more later. It's, it's kind of a highlight that it's not uh, very typical, but it's uh, pretty unique in what we're doing here. Uh, construction value is roughly $120 million. And we've started construction starting in July of 2019 with the abatement and demolition of the old uh, Court East building. And there's a nice timeline that we'll be able to see that action later on. Uh, we started construction, the actual earthwork portion in, on January 27th of 2020. And we're successfully through level six right now with the structure, as you'll see in some progress. And we'll continue to push through the next year through substantial completion, which is April 1st of 2022. And I'd ask if anyone has questions as we go along the way, please feel free to ask. Um, at the end bottom there is one of our uh, sayings is that Gilbane cares and because we're all one family and we truly mean it. You'll see coming up here with this is our family on site. Um, Dan's truly like my brother on site thing, make sure that we're working together. So this is kind of our hierarchy right now is John Gilroy is our senior project executive. He has the overall hand on everything overall. And then on site on a daily basis, there's myself on the left as the senior project manager. So my roles and responsibilities really start at the beginning and making sure that we're coordinating with St. Camillus and making sure that the whole project and plan procedures are set up for success from day one. Uh, Dan takes it then from that point where I've put the plan in place and allowed everyone to have the tools to succeed. Dan takes the tools and works through with the guys in the field to succeed and make sure that everything is going on a daily basis. So Dan's our general superintendent. He works with the foreman tradesmen on site the next four individuals down below are uh, younger individuals that are helping support Dan and I in our daily tasks. So each one kind of breaks into a different segment of what they're responsible for. So Logan is our project engineer for what we call the base core and shell. So base core and shell is the structure, the exterior enclosure, the mechanical electrical plumbing system. So everything that is there that's outside of the next item, which Colin takes care of, and that's the interior unit finishes. So when we're talking about unit finishes, that's the everything that's actually behind Julie right now. So the carpet, the paint, the doors, et cetera. So that's what Colin's responsible for. Tyler takes a pretty good role in the quality aspect of our project. So when we try to make sure that we're providing the best project possible, we have a detailed quality program. And he's responsible for making sure that we succeed in that aspect. We'll get into what quality means a little bit later on here. 
And then Allie is our project safety manager. So at the end of the day, we always say everyone is responsible for safety. Um, and that's without a doubt, but Allie takes it to a whole nother level and that's her primary responsibility. She does a fantastic job on site. So that's our team members. Um, we'll continue on here unless there's any questions. So a couple metrics here that we have from a safety standpoint, we always like to start by talking about there's the safety orientations and how many people have came through this project. So right now, there's been 474 people that have worked on this project. So that's 474 families that have been affected by this fantastic project and had the opportunity to continue to work through some struggling times that we've had through over the last year. Um, we are averaging about 100 tradespeople on site right now, but that will continue to go up as our building progresses. We start getting into the exterior enclosure. And by that, I mean like the outside of the building. Um, so we've worked from the beginning about 150,000 man hours on site. And last month alone, we worked 20,000 man hours and that, that value will continue to go up. We have had uh, zero recordable lost times on site. So that's a uh, positive. That's our goal for the overall project is that everyone's going to come home the same way that they showed up so that everyone still has the ability to go home and see their family, their friends, do the hobbies that they enjoy, whether it be hunting, fishing, cards, et cetera. Um, and then we do a substantial amount of safety inspections on site. So that's each one of our team members has a responsibility to do 25 inspections per year at minimum. And we continue to work through that uh, and make sure that everyone is having a safe work environment. So some of the other things that we do to make sure that safety is number one priority is that we have uh, project specific safety plans. So this is a lot of time in the upfront process that with what I've taken account in is the make sure that what the plan procedure is going to be is what we do in the field in the long term so that we're having a safe work environment. A short service worker program is something that we do to make sure that we're identifying who is a new tradesman on site. So we knew from statistics that roughly the first 30 days are the first opportunity for people to get hurt on the job and when the most likely to have an accident. So we implemented a program where there's a stretchy rubber band that goes on each person's hard hat. For the 30 days you have green and then after that you graduate to a red band. So if the logic here is that if there, it's a buddy system, if someone in a green band is doing something that is potentially unsafe and wouldn't be something that we want, could probably stop or could be something we'd stop, somebody in a red band could say, hey, you know, that's probably not the right thing to do. So it's trying to encourage everyone to speak up and have everyone responsible for safety. Um, a couple other things here is the Go Contractor online safety orientation. So with safety being such a large focus, we want to make sure that before anyone even comes to the job site, that there is a presentation that they go through uh, along with drug testing and some other items and that we make sure that everyone has up front so the expectation is set before we even come to the site. And then the last item here is the focus area as well as housekeeping. Um, everyone knows that a clean site is a safe site and we really take pride in how the site looks. Um, you'll see in some of the photos around, even the exterior is nice and neat and organized. Uh, props to the team without a doubt for making sure we're executing that properly. So then some of the other areas of focus that we have, and I think everyone understands the, what COVID-19 has done to the world as a whole. Um, we've obviously tried to mitigate it as much as possible. We're continuing on the right path, um, have not had, not going to any substantial outbreaks and we'll continue as much as we can. Slip trips and falls as we enter the winter months here are always a higher concern with the amount of freeze thaw that we have in Wisconsin. So we continue to mitigate that through using proper materials and removal methods as much as possible. And then we are, we are pushing as fast and hard as we can to try to accelerate the schedule. So the long hours, we always have to be diligent, understand the mental health of everyone on site. So part of that is having the team out there and talking with everyone to make sure that you know, if someone needs to go home, we do want to ask them that they go home so that they're properly in the right mindset to be safe. So at the end of the day, a mindset of going home and the way you came to work is what we really want to stress here. All right. Uh, so next one here is talking through just a couple examples of the things that we do from a top-down approach 
and remember what's at stake. So during when we do what we call our buyout process, when we're trying to bring the trade partners on board, the people that are going to do the electrical, the plumbing, the mechanical work, et cetera, is that we try to make sure that upfront, we're always being honest and clear with what our expectations are. So on the left side here is our mandatory non-negotiables. Uh, there's a couple of these here that are uh, above and beyond what OSHA requires, but it's something that we think is the best practice for everyone on site. And another example is our stretch and flex program. So we say we're industrial athletes. I know myself, I played a lot of hockey growing up throughout my career and everyone stretches a little individually, but this is a great program to make sure everyone is uh, stretched and ready to go through the work day. So just a couple examples of things we do on site. So next is, this is a great overview looking from the northwest side of site. You can see San Camillo's here on the right side, it's on the south, and then the new independent living residence that's going in. Um, this is a pond on the west side here. There's a, this is the first floor, that black there is the outdoor dining space. And then we go into the typical floors where the residences are here as well. So we'll watch this drone video. So the drone's taking off on the east side of the site. Kind of see some of the Christmas lights that we had put up over the last holiday season. We're, we're looking back south right now. You can see everything that's black is the roof and then there's plywood on top of it to protect the roofing product. So we have lay down space to put form materials with this. So these are column forms. Each one of the towers, to say the cores, are elevator and stair shafts. So this is the red one is elevator two and core two, and then the green one is core one. So those are hydraulically jacked uh, through level 11 right now. And this, when this video was taken, we were working on level six. We'll keep rotating around. We're looking back east right now from where we took off over by the project trailer. The orange that's down on the first floor, that's the exterior sheathing that'll start making the air and vapor barrier along with the curtain wall system that'll go in. All the white down below is a spray applied air and vapor barrier on concrete masonry units. As we rotate around this tall apparatus here is the concrete pump truck. That's how concrete is pumped up to the placing boom that's on the deck. You can see the, there's a laser screed that goes on here that helps put the fit and finish on the deck to have a high quality building without a doubt. So actually it looks like they were just starting when this video is taking the pump concrete. You can see the concrete trucks rotating there. On the east side, our construction trailer is on the east right here, and a couple of the mock-ups we'll talk about later as well. The area that's right by the tower crane base there, that's the outdoor patio space on the first floor. We have a nice skip hoist that's on the end here that's to help move man materials. So that's an exterior elevator. Here's a neat little Quick, quicker video at night, just before the sun sets. Vince, could you point out where the third elevator shaft is? Sure. That so, was a question. absolutely. So the third elevator, it's going to be right here. Let me see if we can get how close we can get it. Yeah. So maybe that's. So elevator one is right here. Two is in red, and then three is this area right here. That's elevators three and four. There's a double bank of elevators right here. Does that answer the question, I guess? Exactly. Okay. Any other questions, I guess, while we have this good example up of what's going on? All right. 
So the next couple of slides are going to be an example of how we manage the project overall. So like we started with, there's a lot of planning that goes up front and now we're at the point of trying to execute the work. So this is what we call a CPM schedule. So a critical path method. So currently there's two that we're working on right now. So we're on level six structure along with level seven structure. So that's the concrete structure that'll support the building and the enclosure. The next step that we start and flow into is the exterior enclosure. So that's the exterior studs, the sheathing, the window wall, and the metal panel that'll go on to make this unique building. Just a quick example of one of the things that we use. So this is a program called Primavera P6 that we use to update it on a monthly basis and review with St. Camilla. So everyone's on the same page of where the projection is for a schedule. And to continue with that topic is that this is another visual representation to really show how much of the structure is complete. Now that last tool was another great one. This is another visual aid to kind of show we're through level six. So everything that is in red is, is poured out and everything that is unhighlighted right now is what we have left. So we're on level six. We have to go through the roof. So level 15 plus the roof. And then there's a little bit of an overrun for the elevator as well. Um, so we'll continue to track that and move in the right direction. A similar uh, slide here shows the, a rendering of what the building will look like with the exterior enclosure. We mentioned that earlier. So the kind of looking at the lines that are on the screen here. So there's, you can tell where the windows are in the balconies. And then in between is where the exterior studs and sheathing and the metal panel go. And that's all what really ties it together. So the slab edge band is one that runs each one of these lines that's horizontally is where the horizontal line of the floor is. And there's a couple nice photos here, kind of just active photos of the current construction site. So another document that we use to communicate with the team on site is this right here. So this is our pour sequence. And this kind of shows on a typical floor what's gonna happen on each one of those blocks of time. So we have concrete pour one, two, and three. So each one of those is roughly 8,000 square feet and takes about four to five hours to pour depending on temperature, et cetera. And then we have, after each one of those pours are complete, there are colored balcony pours that come back. So that's the other rectangles that are shown here that are kind of blocked out. So we pour about two or three of those balconies a little on a daily basis. So if we're not pouring a concrete deck, we're pouring a balcony. So the balconies do take a little bit more time due to the fit and finish. They're uh, colored concrete with um, some exposed views. So we gotta make sure that we take a lot of time and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So the next topic here is talking through our quality and what we utilize to execute that work. So. Our quality control is key. We want to make sure that we're providing the best building with the best fit and finish possible. So we use an electronic system called BIM 360 Field to track all open issues on the project. So we don't try to wait till the end. We try to make sure that we're managing from day one. So we're always actively out there looking for items that need to be corrected and to get in alignment with what the project scope is. So the bottom photo here kind of shows a snapshot of what it looks like in that program. So there's a red dot that kind of says there's an issue here and then we're able to type in what the issue is and assign it to a trade partner so that we can electronically communicate with everyone. And it goes, there's a workflow tool that's part of it. So we can send it out to the company. They can send it back to us saying it's ready to inspect. And then when we inspect it, we can close it. And through that process, we're able to make sure that we're providing the best building possible. Um, so there's another one too that we want to talk about is um, we do a lot of other things. There's without going into an extensive amount of detail on what we do on a daily basis. I think uh, one thing I want to talk about here is the mock-ups. So to communicate what the building is going to look like before the building was ever even built, we went through and installed two exterior mock-ups. So the photo right here is a rendering of what it will look like. We, on the east side of the site, just south of our construction trailer, if anyone's ever interested, you're welcome to stop by and take a look. The one to the south is what shows what the curtain wall in the first floor will look like. That includes the natural stone, 
curtain wall, metal panel, uh, et cetera. Then the next one to the north is what a typical floor will look like in each unit for each unit. So there's metal panels, uh, window wall, railing systems, everything that would look like on the permanent building. So it's a great opportunity to look at what the buildings will look like before we're ever even considering getting everything up on the building. So what a great opportunity to be able to look at it prior. Some of the other items like this balcony benchmark inspection. So we, on the mock-up, went through and looked at what the balconies were gonna look like. And then with when the first balconies were poured, we wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page. So the St. Camillus executive team and Gilbane went out and reviewed these balconies and put together a list of items that was approved and a few items that needed to be adjusted and made it through to get the best building possible. All right, so then next here's a time lapse that we're gonna go through and go. So overall, this is going to show how fast everything started coming down over the last year and a half and the progress that have taken on site. So you can see our construction trailer is right here for reference. This is from the top of the St. Camillo building looking east. Um, so the earth tension piles came, the tower cranes going installed, all the deep foundations are going in and driven. It was a noisy time. We were able to work through that. And here comes the concrete for slab and grade, getting into the concrete decks. And then from here, we continue to go vertical. So this is about August right now. And for the last five, six months, we've been really focusing on going vertical and getting as high up in the air as we can so that we can have that level of separation for the exterior enclosure to start. All right. So next here, we have some photos, just overview from the site from December 28th when we flew the drone. So this is looking back at the overall site. Another photo looking back from the Northwest side. Looking from the Southeast. So this is on the level six pre-pour. So this is a good example showing everything that goes into the deck prior to getting the concrete place. So there's penetrations that go for all the mechanical systems. All the black lines are the post-tension strands. And then all these are the silver here is what goes down where the corridor is for the mechanical systems to get fastened to. This is another view kind of showing all the same materials just from a different angle as well. This is the reinforcing at the live ends. So each one of these ends are where, when we say post-tension concrete, there's a hydraulic jack that ties onto each one of these ends and pulls the cables to a specified tension. And then those are sheared off at the end and plugged with grout. Uh, overall, looking down, looking up from the first floor outdoor patio area at the tower, this is an interior balcony slab, or not balcony slab. Uh, this is an interior elevator slab. So the hole right here, that's right here is where elevator one will end up being placed. This is uh, the skip hoist that'll be installed. So this is the exterior elevator that we use for construction use only. This is reinforcing that'll go in the, that is going in the balconies. It's mild reinforced. And then on the edge here is where the health and insulated balcony unit is to provide that thermal separation. And then an overall view, a little bit closer, showing the exterior sheathing, which is the orange here, and then the white sprayed upon uh, air and vapor barrier. And then a close up view of the sheathing on the first floor as well. And the last photo here is of our concrete laser screed. So this is how we're providing a very high level fit and finish to the project, making sure that the floors are very flat. 
a new tool that's to the market that we're utilizing to make sure the best value is here. All right. So that's what we had for today. Is there any questions that I can answer? Julie? Um, if, yeah, so next steps. If you would like to learn more about the East residents, um, I mentioned that we have 168 apartments, but I didn't mention we're pre-selling those units. Um, to date, we've sold 118 units, um, which means that individuals have put down uh, a deposit, which is 100% refundable should they change their mind in the future or not like how the building's shaping up. So I would encourage you to learn more about the East residents, why we still have pre-construction pricing and pre-construction openings. Um, we do have your emails. So one of our senior living specialists will just shoot you a quick email the next day or so. And if you're interested in learning more about the pricing, we can send you an electronic packet. Um, we are open, so you can come in and look at the beautiful finishes. Uh, we have a lot more um, information that you can touch and feel and learn about the East residents. Um, and it's a great time to do it. Um, so I hope that you will come and visit us. If you're interested in San Camilo, which is our existing independent living, um, we are touring and we are touring safely as well as doing Zoom visits and um, virtual tours. So I'm happy everybody joined us today and I hope you um, found it interesting. And maybe some of you came to our, our Christmas on the construction site and drove through and took home some wonderful um, dinners. So last chance for any questions. Great. Well, thank you, Vince. This was really interesting. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now. Bye.